Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to explore the unit circle. The unit circle. A circle with a radius of 1 is known as the unit circle. It's that easy. This strategy makes it simple to recall the unit circle. However, you do need to memorize a lot of angles and sine cos coordinates. But no worries, I'll now show you several tricks and quick cuts that will improve your memory. Let's investigate this. The unit circle appears here. The axes are these. The x-axis is seen here. The y-axis is seen here. These lines cross the circle at four different locations. They are the top, bottom, left, and right. On the unit circle, determining an angle always begins on the right side. After that, you rotate and proceed up counterclockwise until you are at the selected angle. Let's now examine the four angles that are obtained from these points. This point, this point, this point, and this point. First, there is zero angle. Starting at angle zero, we proceed. The angle pi by two is then obtained by rising and rotating counterclockwise through a quarter of the circle. These angles contain pi and are measured in radians rather than degrees. The angle pi, this is one half of the circle. As a result, the entire circle will be two pi times that amount. The angle three pi by two is then obtained by moving another quarter of the circle around. One quarter of the way through its diameter was pi by two. The distance traveled in three quarters of the circle is therefore three pi by two. Now that we have moved another quarter circle, we can obtain two pi. We have now completed the circle and take note that this angle in this position is both zero and two pi. Okay, let's examine the pi by four angles now. The circle was divided into four equal halves by the additional angles we just made. These will divide it once more. As a result, if we divide pi by two by two again, we get pi by four. And these ones are always precisely in the quarter circle's center. One pi by four is the initial value, simply pi by four. The next is three pi by four. Next, five pi by four. Next, seven pi by four. Take note of the sequence. 1, 3, 5, 7. As a result, you can see that this is rapidly becoming a nightmare. We now have pi by 6s, therefore a third of the circle when divided by 3 is pi by 6, if one quarter of the circle is pi by 2. Pi by 6 is the first value over 6. Does result in 5 pi by 6 if we then reflect it on the opposite side of the axis? below 7 pi by 6 and 11 pi by 6 down here. Okay, lastly, there are pi by 3s. Here is the first pi by 3. Although it may seem odd to you that pi by 3 is larger than pi by 6, keep in mind that you are dividing by those values. Although you are dividing by 3, you are actually doing it by a larger amount, namely 6. Therefore, this has a lower, lesser value than that. Regardless, this is pi by 3. If you mirror it along the y-axis, you can have 2 pi 3. Here we have 4 pi by 3. And this is 5 pi by 3 down here. Alright, I'll now demonstrate why the unit circle is beneficial. Every angle on a circle has a point where it contacts the circle. The coordinates of a x, y point are x and y. The x coordinate is 1 for this angle, which is 0. The x distance is 1, since it has a radius of 1. In the y direction, there is no distance. This is really important. The cosine and sine of these two coordinates values are also provided. Your cosine is the first value, the x coordinate. Your sine is the second value which is the y-coordinate. Now, the cos is 1 and the sine is 0 at this angle of 0. 
Moving to the top of the circle is pi by 2. We have the coordinates since the y distance is exactly 1 unit and the x distance is 0. 0, 1. Cos is equal to 0 and sine to 1. We have the xy coordinates minus 1, 0 on the left. The circle's base is where we have 0, minus 1. Let's now fill in the points for the circle's other angles. These three digits are all you need to keep in mind. They are square roots and fractions, which is probably not the lovely tidy hole numbers you were hoping for. Just keep in mind that the smallest number is 1 half. The middle sized number is square root 2 by 2, sometimes known as root 2 over 2. And the highest number is square root 3 by 2. It's crucial to memorize these numbers because you'll be using them frequently. Let's examine pi by 6 as an angle. The x coordinate of the question point must be square root 3 by 2, since it has the biggest x distance of the three angles at pi by 6. We record this appropriately. Pi by 4 has a lesser, though rather still greater x distance than pi by 3. Square root 2 by 2 is a middle sized number as a result. The x distance is then the smallest of the three for the angle pi by three. The x coordinate is therefore one by two. Let's now apply the same reasoning to fill in the y values for those points. The angle pi by six is where the lowest y distance or height occurs. Therefore, the least value is one by two. Square root two by two is a result since the y distance is in the middle at pi by four. The height at pi by 3 is greater y distance. Therefore, square root 3 by 2 is a required value. The points for the remaining angles in the circle can now be determined using the same principle. The only distinction is that you can be under a bad sign. Your coordinates might contain a negative sign, so keep that in mind. For instance, everything was good when you were in the circle's first quadrant. There were all positive numbers for the coordinates. On the other hand, if you're in the second quadrant, you've moved against x. All of the x coordinates and all of the y coordinates in the first quadrant will be positive. The y coordinates will be positive and the x coordinates will be negative in the second quadrant. The x and y coordinates in the third quadrant will be both negative. The x coordinates will be positive and the y coordinates will be negative in the fourth quadrant. Just to refresh your memory, the cost value is the first integer in each of these locations and angles. The sign is a second number. Pi by six indicates that each of these angles is a radian angle. You might have to acquire degrees, and each one has an angle in degrees that corresponds to it. 180 degrees, as you might already be aware. That would imply that pi by two, half of that, is 90 degrees. This is clearly zero. Pi by six will be 30 degrees as a result. 45 degrees at pi by four, 60 degrees at pi by 3, 90 degrees for instance. I also recognize that the unit circle may be a lot of information to take in all at once if you're trying to memorize it. This can be very puzzling, but learning will be much easier and faster if you only recall the patterns. I hope now you have a better understanding of the unit circle. We hope that this video helped you better understand the concept. Make sure to like and subscribe for more from this channel.